إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئة أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولقد آتينا لقمان الحكمة أن اشكر لله ومن يشكر فإنما يشكر لنفسه ومن كفر فإن الله غني حميد وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم نعمتان مغبون فيهما كثير من الناس الصحة والفراغ أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Indeed all praise and gratitude are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who is ultimately in control of every affair the one who controls the circumstances of our lives and the one whom we depend on for every need that we have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most high, the most exalted, has blessed us with a life of this world, a life that is testing, a life that is filled with difficulties and trials, a life that is filled with imtihan and test after test, that at every moment what decisions we make, at every juncture that we come, do we choose as sirat al mustaqim do we, do we choose the straight path or do we choose the easy and the crooked path? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is constantly placing these challenges in front of us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, A'hasib al-nasu an yutraku an yakulu amanna wa hum la yuftanun. Does mankind think for a moment that he will say, I believe in Allah, he will say, La ilaha illallah, wa hum la yuftanun, and that belief will not be tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making a declaration here that once you declare tawheed, once you declare belief and servitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thereafter comes the test to show the true nature of that belief. Do you really believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And those who will believe in Allah and those who will persevere, those who will succeed in spite of the challenges, those are the ones whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward with the Jannatul Khuld, with the everlasting paradise. And those who will succumb to their desires, and today they will say they believe, and tomorrow they will believe in their desires. Today will they will say La ilaha illallah and tomorrow they will turn to someone else or something else then those people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared the fire of Jahannam for them. So this life is constantly testing our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains in the Quran that the nature of this world is such that mankind is constantly tested to see those who truly believe, to bring to light the belief of the true believers. So as we go through this life, as we live our lives in this world, we have to constantly be aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing us. This is why we, we should always go back to the, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that whenever there is, a, there is some issue, there is a doubt, there is a concern what to do, then go back to the ma qala Allah wa ma qala Rasul. Go back to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said and what the, what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. And if we look at the advices of the Quran, the teachings of the Quran, we find many, many advices. Among those advices, we find the advice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selected from someone who was not a prophet. He wasn't a prophet. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his advice and recorded it in the Quran for us to take lessons from. This individual, his name was Luqman. Today we see big protests and marches and activism taking place around Black Lives Matter 
and equal, equality and uh, racial equality. Islam gave dignity to each and every person, the slaves, the free people. When they became Muslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevated their status by one thing, by knowledge, by the deen of Islam. When they came to Islam, it didn't matter whether they were slaves, whether they were black, whether they were Arab, whether they were non-Arab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave dignity and honor to everyone across the board. So Islam brought about racial equality, justice and fairness centuries ago. Unfortunately, many Muslims have drifted away from this due to tribalism and personal beliefs and the biases that they find, implicit biases within themselves. They, they turn to the evil of racism. Regardless, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevated Luqman alayhi salam. Luqman was an African slave, very dark in complexion, and he was not a prophet. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, we gave him wisdom. We gave him wisdom. This is not Allah, this is not me or you saying that that person is wise. This is Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth, saying that this person is wise. Luqman has wisdom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given a divine declaration of the wisdom of Luqman alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that wisdom of Luqman, anishkur lillah, the first thing his wisdom taught him, the first thing his wisdom taught him was to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> Once someone was walking and they saw Luqman teaching the people when he became well known for his wisdom, he was teaching the people. The person stopped and said, You, aren't you the one who was a slave of so and so? He said, Yes, I was. He said, You, you weren't you the one who was herding the goats? He said, Yes, I was a shepherd. He said, How come you, such a person, has reached this level of honor that you can be teaching and people are coming to you for knowledge? Luqman said, he said, I have lived by certain principles. Among them, I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I always told the truth. Among them, I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I always told the truth. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Luqman wisdom and his wisdom brought him dignity. For you and I, if we, have to, if we wish to have an ounce of the dignity that Luqman alayhi salam achieved, we can also achieve it by achieving knowledge. Whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to elevate mankind from the statements of the Quran to the incident of Adam alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the beginning, when Allah wanted to show the fadl, the status, the virtue and the, the high level of Adam alayhi salam over the angels, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, we give him knowledge. We give him knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Adam alayhi salam the knowledge of the things at that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him knowledge and as a result, his status was elevated even above that of the angels. And this is, good, this is the same for you and I, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يرفع الله الذين آمنوا منكم والذين أوتوا العلم درجات Allah elevates us by the knowledge that we achieve. Today, knowledge has become something which we find a little bit of it on the internet and we think we have knowledge. We find, we, we read a book and we think we have knowledge. Knowledge, that's information. That is information. Knowledge is when, you, when it changes your behavior. Knowledge changes your character. When the information is processed and it changes the actions of a person to such an extent that that person leaves ma'asiyah, the disobedience of Allah, and turns to the, to the Islah, the reformation of, his, of himself and becomes righteous and pious, that is when information becomes knowledge. So today we have widespread information. You can find anything, you can find any hadith in Al-Bukhari, in Muslim, with the click of a button. But the knowledge, that which, that which creates and brings about change within us, that is missing. That is very shallow. So our knowledge is vast. But our knowledge, our information is vast, but our knowledge is very shallow. It doesn't affect us much. And if we hope to, to, to bring honor and dignity to ourselves, we have to place importance 
on Islamic knowledge, understand what is halal, what is haram, the rules of fiqh, understand the, the tafsir of the Quran, learn the Arabic language. It always fascinates me that a Muslim can live in this world, perform salah for all his life, and miss out on the sweetness of understanding the words of the Quran. It is always amazing that so many people go through their lives without understanding, directly understanding the words of the Quran as they stand in the salah. When you learn the Arabic language and you stand in your salah, your salah elevates in status. Now you're no longer just listening to a recitation. If it's beautiful, you're interested. If it's mediocre, if it's normal, then you might be distracted. Rather, when you understand the words of the Quran, and the Quran is very easy to understand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ We have made it easy. And I will tell you, the Quran is one of the easiest books in Arabic language, if not the easiest to understand. The Quran is simple and very easy to understand. A little bit of effort and we can be able to understand what the, what the, the Imam is reciting as we stand in our salah. Now imagine for a moment that your salah is transformed from just four rakats of standing up and down with proper intention of course but now it transforms into a direct message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it transforms the entire nature of salah so make that effort learn develop the knowledge of Islam you will see there's a reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said when people develop knowledge they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more the ignorant person, the one who doesn't have knowledge, would have less fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the one who has more knowledge will have more fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning he will be more pious, more righteous. So a good example of someone going from one of the lowest levels of creation, being a slave, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevated him to being known as the wise person of his time. Not only his time, but he, his advice was recorded for us centuries later to follow. Luqman alayhi salam, his wisdom, the first thing it taught him was to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he was grateful in everything that he did. Apart from being absolutely grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Luqman was grateful to the people around him. He had a master. He had a master who owned him, his master. He was a slave. And there are many stories about him and his master. But one of the incidents tells us that once his master called him, and it was the practice of the master that whenever he had some, some food or something to eat, he would share with his slaves, and especially Luqman. So Luqman, he called Luqman, and it was a season of melons, like watermelon, some type of melon. And he said, someone gave me this melon. I would like you to, to, to have some of it. So he started cutting slices of the melon and he would give it to Luqman. And Luqman continued to eat every slice that he gave him. And when there was one slice left, the master said, let me taste some of this melon. It seems like it's very tasty. He took one bite of it and the strong, bitter taste of it had, had a reaction with his body and he fell un unconscious. When he woke up, he asked Luqman, he said, I, was, I kept on giving you this melon and you kept on eating it. You kept on eating it as if it was normal. And I took one bite of it and it rendered me unconscious. How did you do it? Luqman said, as I was eating, my, my love and my concern or my, my gratitude for your kindness made it taste sweet to me. I was so grateful for your kindness that it didn't matter that it was bitter. It, it tasted sweet to me. And this is how grateful he was. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when we give him wisdom, the first thing he taught him was to be grateful. Today we develop knowledge and we become more arrogant, unfortunately. We learn and we become more arrogant. Knowledge should make us like Luqman, humble. Someone told him, you were a slave. He said, yes, I was. Someone told him you were a shepherd of goats. He said, yes, I was. He didn't deny it. He didn't become haughty and proud. This is knowledge. 
This is knowledge. When knowledge changes our hearts, humbles us, it makes us humble and calm in our, in our minds. It makes us grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Luqman, his first advice was, His first teaching, his first wisdom was to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then continues. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places a, an explanatory sentence in, after this ayah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The person who, who expresses gratitude, today is a season of thanksgiving. Everyone is asking, what are you thankful for? We have to, as Muslims, we are taught to be grateful to the highest level. For the very small, for the very very minute things, we are taught to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. Today when people are asking, what are you thankful for? Everyone looks for the significant and the big things, the big blessings of life. No one says, I'm thankful for air that I breathe. I'm thankful for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving me the deen of Islam. We overlook these things because we take them for granted. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The person who is grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he only is he's only grateful for his own benefit. Meaning, if you're grateful to Allah, you thank Allah, then you only benefit yourself. And if you are ungrateful, that person who is ungrateful that person who thinks I achieved this I have what I need I am powerful I am knowledgeable that ungrateful person who doesn't recognize the blessings of Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says then know then know for, sure, for certain Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need you Allah doesn't need you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in hadith Qudsi لو أن أولكم وآخركم وإنسكم وجنكم كانوا على أتقى قلب رجل منكم لم يزد ذلك في ملك شيء Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says if every one of you decide to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it wouldn't take away from the status of Allah ولو أن أولكم وآخركم وإنسكم وجنكم كانوا على أتقى قلب رجل منكم لم يزد ذلك في ملك شيء and if every one of you decides to be on the most righteous path, it doesn't increase the status of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we do good deeds, we do it for our own benefit. When we neglect our good deeds and we commit isyan, ma'asiyah, the disobedience of Allah, we do it at our own detriment. It brings the harm upon you and I. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed this, this, this statement that if you thank Allah, then you get benefit from it. If you are ungrateful to Allah, then Allah doesn't need you. Hamid. Allah is totally independent from anyone. Luqman gave many advices to his son, but one of the advices he gave, he said to his son, he said, if you wish to commit sins, he said, if you wish to commit sins, then do so as much as you think you can bear the fire of hell. He said, if you wish to commit sins, Go ahead, but only do it as much as you think you can bear the fire of hell. If you can bear the fire of hell for five minutes, then enjoy five minutes of sin. A fire that is 70 times hotter than the hottest fire of this world, no human being would ever comprehend and think for a moment that they can bear that, a second of it. So his advice to his son was, Commit that sin, go, go, go ahead, but do so as much as you think you can bear the fire of Jahannam. <laughs> he said, if you wish to be ungrateful to Allah, then do so as much as you think you don't need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do so as much as you think you do not need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning, if you think you don't need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to breathe, then be ungrateful about that. If you think you don't need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to walk, then go ahead and disobey Him with your walking, with your feet. But as much as you need Allah, 
be grateful to Allah for that thing. This was the advice of Luqman. This advice can be generic as well. They can be generally given good advice. But Luqman in his wisdom, he always knew how to put forward the advice. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that when we invite someone to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't do it with a brash and harsh and rigid form. Udu'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal maw'idhatul hasana Invite to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with wisdom and maw'idhatul hasana and beautiful advice. Today we write this shout and ridicule and insult so that we can feel good about ourselves that we're better than the person we're insulting or ridiculing or correcting. But if we truly care about correcting someone, then we wouldn't be shouting and screaming. Rather, we'd be teaching and educating. We'd be imparting wisdom. We wouldn't be giving instructions. Rather, we'd be teaching the way Luqman taught his son. When Luqman would address his son, we get to the fact that, he, that a father is giving advice to his child for, in a moment. But the words he used, he would say, Ya Bunayya. He wouldn't say, Ya Ibni, Ya Ibni. Or he wouldn't say, Ya Walad. He wouldn't say, Oh boy, come here. Oh, or, or son. He would add something to it. He expressed his affection for his son. He would say, Ya Bunayya. Oh, my beloved child. Oh, my beloved child. And over and over he would say this. This was part of his wisdom as well. That when you wish to impart knowledge unto someone, you soften their heart by being kind to them at first. There's a saying in Arabic, Al-insanu abdul ihsan. Al-insan, abdul ihsan. Human beings are slaves to kindness. Human beings are slaves to to kindness meaning when you're kind to someone it takes over their personality they become affected by it and you can basically get them to do anything through kindness the further the bigger fact here is that a father was given advice to his son he took the time out to think and to give advice to his son he made that time to speak with him to give him life advice before he left this world Luqman would call his son at different times in his life and he would speak to him and he would give him different forms of advice. We have to make that time. We have to have that concern for our, of our future generation. Apart from the advices, what examples are we leaving as well? Luqman didn't only preach wisdom, he practiced this as well. Someone once asked Luqman, how did you become so honorable, so noble and wise? How did you develop good characteristics and good qualities? Luqman said, I learned manners, I learned good etiquettes from people who lack it. He said, I learned good manners from people who have bad manners. Meaning whenever he would see someone engaging in something embarrassing, shameful, something that is inappropriate. He would reflect upon it as a lesson for himself. He wouldn't use it as, a, as an opportunity to gossip and to talk about the person, but rather it was a moment for him to reform himself. It was a moment for him to teach himself a lesson that this is something I would not like to be seen doing. This is something we have to develop. We live in a society where as soon as we see something we want to say, we want to talk about it. The conversation becomes very interesting when the gossip starts. But we should use that moment to reflect upon our own selves. We should use that moment to teach ourselves a lesson. And we should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that moment where you see someone or where you find out someone is engaged in a sin, in something shameful and embarrassing, Use that moment to say, Oh Allah, protect me from that action. Because only that way can we be, can we be protected. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspire us to benefit from these ayats of the Quran and to benefit from the advices of, Sulaiman, of Luqman alayhi salam. The scholars explain about the advice of Luqman. 
that because this was the advice of a father to a son, this was one of the purest forms of advice. There was no ulterior motive, no agenda, no hidden, no hidden message. It was pure advice that a father wishes the best for his child, and this is what he is giving to him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to take this advice and benefit from it and change our hearts for the better. Let us develop knowledge that benefits us and keep us away from that which would take us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not benefit us. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أرحم أمتي بأمتي أبو بكر وأشدهم في أمر الله عمر وأصدقهم حياء عثمان وأقضاهم علي وفاطمة سيدة نساء أهل الجنة والحسن والحسين سيدا شباب أهل الجنة اللهم اغفر لعباس وولده مغفرة ظاهرة وباطنة لا تغادر ذنبا الله الله في أصحابي لا تتخذهم غرضا من بعدي فمن أحبهم فبحبي أحبهم ومن أبغضهم فببغضي أبغضهم وخير القرون قرني ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وعز وأجل وأتم وأهم وأكبر أقيموا الصلاة